Hello, my name is uh, Chad Matlan and today I would like to share a message with you and uh, what I would call it is uh, when, when did the world become church? and today is the 17th of September 2018 you know the devil has for a long time had a plan to twist the Word of God and the plan of God. And he also had a plan to do this after uh, Jesus rose from the dead and uh, created his, uh, his church, which is his body. So uh, the devil is active today, even if he is defeated. But uh, <clears throat> he's active in a way as long as we don't apply the victory of Christ, he, he, he is he's able to operate. But now, <clears throat> now I'm going to talk about God's plan and what the devil has done. You, saw, you see, God has created his body, his church, and, and we can... Uh, become members of this church and we can even inherit his kingdom that is the plan of God that we shall inherit his kingdom receive eternal life reign with God yeah come to heaven live forever that's his plan and that is something he is offering all men God wants all men to be saved everybody to be saved that's and receive the glory of God that's God's plan but we have to receive it we have to yeah you, you need to you, you must want to have it you must take it you must uh, apply it if somebody offers you a gift if you don't want it well that's up to you but God has provided everything so that he can uh, He's provided a ransom so that he can uh, free us from uh, what is coming, from the darkness and, and the fate that is coming for mankind if they don't receive Jesus. You see, all men uh, have to die and after that it is judgment. You see, all men, whether you believe it or not, you will face judgment. And the judge is going to be Jesus Christ. He's going to judge, he's appointed to be the judge over all men. He is the judge. So it's Jesus we're going to face. It's Jesus we're going to meet. And he's going to judge the world according to the deeds. And all sin has to be judged. All sin has to be punished. We don't know how the punishment will be exactly. But we know that some, uh, some will be uh, punished to eternal fire. <clears throat> so now to receive the gift of God... To receive Jesus, <clears throat> to receive grace, to receive this great promise of God, to receive His ransom, we must love Him with all our heart. You see, a relationship with God is almost like a marriage. He, he wants to receive us into a marriage relationship with Him, to become one with Him, to receive His life, His spirit, he has given us everything. He has provided healing, He has provided life, He has provided provision, protection. Everything you can imagine, God has provided. But to receive it, we need to enter into a relationship with God. And that is like a marriage relationship. You know, God loves all men with all His heart. You see, in uh, John chapter 3, 16, it's written, For so God loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. <clears throat> so to believe here is more than just to have faith that he died on the cross. To believe includes also, involves also to repent and follow him. To be committed to him. It's like, again, like a marriage. <clears throat> God loves us with all, uh, all his heart. But 
the, there's one thing he requires for us to receive his gift, the gift of the kingdom of God, for him to receive us into his kingdom. And that is that we love him back. You see, that is requirement in a marriage. If a husband loves a, 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 a woman with all his heart, if a man loves a woman with all his heart and wants her to become his wife, there is one requirement for her, her to be able to enter his life, and that is that she repent from dating other men and uh, commit her life, her faithfulness, her commitment, give her commitment, her heart to her husband alone. You see, if she decides that she, yes, she wants to be married, but she wants to have a relationship with another man on the side, maybe sleep with him, or, or, or uh, like one night a year, or one night a month, that's not good enough. She will not be entered, uh, no man will receive her into marriage, I believe, if he is uh, sane, he will not receive her into marriage because she will be rejected because she didn't give him all her love you see she doesn't need to be perfect but she need to be give him her heart she need to give him all her heart and the same way with a man if a woman loves a man and the same with him if she loves him with all her heart and and he doesn't want to he want to be married but he doesn't want to be fully committed he want to be a little bit committed to other women sleep around with them sometime well then he will not be able to marry, enter the marriage if she if, if if this woman is of a right mind he will not be able to enter into marriage relationship because she he will be rejected it's impossible it will not work if he's not rejected then but if it's it's discovered later that he is unfaithful then he will be thrown out of the marriage and that's how it is with God also God needs our heart. If we won't give him our heart, <clears throat> then he will not give us the kingdom. We will not have the power to enter the kingdom of God. Because we didn't receive love for him. You see, we need to receive love for God. We need to make a decision. After we have faith in him, to be faithful and committed. Committed. So in Matthew 22, 37, Matthew 22, 37, there it is written, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, verse 38. So it's a commandment. To love God is a commandment. It's not a feeling, it's a commandment. Feelings can come fur before you make the decision to be faithful, or it can come later. But you make a decision to be faithful to God, to be committed to His Word. And you know, to be faithful to God is to be faithful to Jesus. If you don't honor Jesus, we don't honor God. Jesus is God among us, Emmanuel. And to be faithful to Jesus is to make a decision to be faithful to the Word of God. To be committed to the Word of God and not to the philosophies of the world. And not to sin, not to the passions of the flesh, not to money, not to, not to the world. You make a decision to be faithful and committed to the Word of God. When God sees that your heart is good, your eyes are good, then your body will become full of light. He will receive you. He will give you His righteousness. He will give you His Spirit. He will give you eternal life. He will give you His presence. He will live with you. He will reveal Himself to you. He will start to operate in your life in a mighty way. That is his promise. Praise the name of Jesus. <clears throat> and when we give him our heart, 
what, we, what is actually happened? We don't only get married or enter a marriage relationship with God, but we become members of His body, the church. And the body of Christ is called the church. And that's written in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1. Verse 22 and 23. There's written. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So the church is the body of Christ. And when your heart is right, you become a member of this body. That is the great thing. We, we are called to become one with God. Members of His body. That is a, an amazing thing. We have no understanding of really what implications that is in all eternity. But we are going to be one with God. It's a position much higher than the angels. Angels are created to be but to be angels, they are not uh, members of God's own body. And God will live in us. We become also temples of the Holy Spirit. Temples of God. And God will live within us. That is also more than the angels. Angels are created to be holy beings, but God is not living within them. So that's an amazing position we as uh, humans get. And that is what he is promising us, if he can only give him a, our heart. To be committed and faithful to him. And about the being becoming members, we can read in 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. <clears throat> Verse 12 to 14. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. Hallelujah. That is the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Then we are in a relationship with God and this relationship is really much more intimate than a marriage because we also become one body with Him. We have His Spirit within. God will live within us. Jesus will be in us. The Holy Spirit will be in us. The potential of this relationship is unimaginable. Praise the name of Jesus. <clears throat> so, because we need to love God with all our heart, that means 100%. Because of that, we cannot love the world. 1 John 2, 15 and 16. 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of, is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah! <clears throat> so you see, we cannot love the world. You need to have your love for God must be undivided. You cannot love another thing, uh, anything else. You can't love the world. You can't be committed to the world. You can't give your heart to the world. You must give your heart to Jesus, to God. Undivided, 100%. That's a requirement. Without that, you are not, will not be able to enter and you will, and if you have entered and you start to love the world, you will not be able to remain in Christ. Amen? So we must not love the world. If we love the world, the love of the Father is not, not in us. So we will not have life. 
life will be taken away from us if we love the world, if we give our heart to the world, if we commit ourselves and become faithful to the world, if we seek the world first and then God second. That is what God needs. But now if we follow Jesus, you see, to follow Jesus means 100%. John 8, 12. John 8, John 8, 12. There it is written. <clears throat> then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen? He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Light of life. And, and now, how much do you think we need to follow Jesus to have the light of life? Is it 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%? No. <clears throat> to follow Jesus, we must do it 100%. We must do it with all our heart. We must have repented from following, following, following anything else to follow Jesus. That is the purpose of our life now. We follow Jesus. We serve Him. We are committed to follow Him, to follow His Word, to follow His Spirit, to follow the truth. Amen? Then, when our heart is right before God, then we shall have the light of life. He will give light in light of life. His word, word will become a light to our path. We will have direction. God will lead us. We will have revelation. The Spirit has come alive. Hallelujah. But if we don't give Him all our heart, if we don't follow Jesus, well, we follow Him maybe 60%. But we have committed ourselves to other things. Then we shall be in darkness. No revelation, no, no power, no gift, no fruit of the Spirit. No joy, no peace from God. No life, no spirit of life producing the healing and deliverance and freedom. No freedom. Only darkness. Then we shall be in darkness. But now, this is great. The Word of God is great. Now we have understand how to enter the Kingdom of God. We cannot love the world. And we cannot love sin or passions of the flesh. That's all for all the world. It's of the world. Many things in the world. You have internet, you have TV, family, family relationships. Friends, relationship with friends, it's, it's all relationships of the world, in the world. You see, our commitment must be with Jesus all the way. Of course, when we love God, we will also love our brothers. But we seek God first, His will, and then His Spirit will produce love in us for our brothers and us children, our family, our mother, our sisters, and and, and to be faithful at work and, and different things of like that. But, but it's a fruit of us following Jesus and, and committing to Him. Amen? But what the devil has done to twist the Word of God and to twist God's plan is that he now, he has made us believe that the world, the world is the church. And he has dressed the world with many Christian names to deceive us into believing that the world is church. And that we need to be committed to the world. So by mistake, we call today institutions, associations, organizations, corporations, groups, ministries, denominations for churches. These are all structures and organizations of the world. But today we call them churches. And then we are expected 
to become members of these structures of the world, to be committed, to be faithful, to give our tithing to, to these structures, organizations, ministries. It is almost an obligation today from these circles that you need to commit. You need to find your own church. You find, need to find a local organization which they call a local church. You need to become a member. You need to give your tithing. You need to submit to your pastor. You need to submit to his vision. And we feel like this is the Christian thing to do. And we have all been tricked into giving our heart to the world dressed as Christianity. The leaders of these uh, worldly organizations, you see, even if it's called Christian, it's a worldly organization. It's an organization of the world that is often registered with the state. And the leaders of this organization we call priests, bishops, pastors and apostles. With them being leaders of worldly systems. And many of these uh, leaders, they have their own churches. They are the boss of their own church. But this is all twisted. This is the world and is dressed as Christianity. And then we commit, as Christians, we commit, give our heart to these structures of the world and to the leaders. And we submit to their will and their plan. And when God asks us to do something, we sometimes go to our pastor and ask if it's okay, I feel God is wanting me to do this, and he comes up with, he's saying, no, 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 this doesn't fit with the vision of our church. It doesn't fit with the doctrine of our church. It doesn't fit with my vision. It doesn't fit with our program. And then you refrain from doing, maybe doing the will of God because you have to obey your church and your pastor or your priest. <clears throat> this is very serious. The church has been deceived <clears throat> to give their heart to the world. The world has become Christian. The world has become church. The CEOs, the bosses of these organizations have become pastors, priests, apostles, apostles, bishops, and other names. <coughs> and then we are neglecting the real body of Jesus, the brothers of Christ, the brothers in the body, and a true fellowship in the church. We neglect that because we have our own church. You, you know, if you ask somebody, what church do you belong to? And you really ask them, what church have you given your heart to? What church do you go to? And they come up with all kinds of names of where they have committed their heart to be faithful. Because in Hebrew 10, 10, 10, 25, Hebrew, Hebrew 10, 10, 25, Hebrew 10, 10, 25, there we go. 10, 25, there's written, <coughs> Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You see, God wants us to fellowship, assemble together and fellowship, but of course we need to do that in the name of Jesus. And we do that with the brothers in the body, those who love Jesus with all their heart. 
That's the requirement to be in the fellowship of the church, is that you love, you show fruit, that you love Jesus. You've given Him all your heart. You don't, you're not committed to an organization or a system in the world. Your heart is not there. Your heart is not with the, with the, the bosses and the leaders of these organizations and systems and structures. But your heart is with Jesus. And then God wants us to recognize those God have appointed in the church. There are real apostles, real pastors, real teachers, real bishops. But they are not, they are not positions in an organization. They are gifts given to the body of Christ. They have been appointed by God to the body of Christ, to His church, to edify His body. We're going to come back to that. And uh, you see, as Christians, when we love Jesus, we will also receive the love of the Father in our heart. And when we have the love of the Father in our heart, we will also love the brothers, those who love Jesus, with all their heart. We will love them because there will be deep, call it to deep, there will be a connection in the Spirit. You will rejoice when we, you meet somebody who loves Jesus with all his heart and you would love, you would want to fellowship with that person. But today when we meet another Christian, you ask him, what church do you go to? And so you say, and then he said, well, I'm a Methodist, and then another said, I'm an Adventist. And then, then he said, well, okay, then we, are, we have uh, no desire to fellowship because we belong to different churches. Something is terribly wrong. 1 John 4.20 If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Hallelujah. And then I will read from 1 Corinthians 12, 27 to 28. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 to 28. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, in the church, in his body. God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. God has appointed in his body. You see, there are true apostles and there are false apostles. May God help us to to discover to uh, how do you say it? to find find who is the false, self-appointed uh, apostles, self-appointed pastors, self-appointed bishops. They make themselves be that. It's not appointed by God. If you have a gift from God, the fruit will be manifested. It will, it will be obvious what God has put in your heart. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 11 to 16. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipment of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the state stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man 
and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what, by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so those ministers, they're speaking the truth in love. They have the love of the Father because they are fully committed to Jesus. And they have knowledge of the truth. They speak the truth in love for the edifying of the body of Christ. But today, to become a minister in, uh, in, 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 in the the in the world that is called, in the, in the structures of the world, you need to be educated in, an, uh, uh, in a theological school, maybe, that is belonging to that specific organization. Unless you have an education in that, within that organization, you will never be able to be a priest or a, a, a pastor or things like that, because you need to be faithful to your organization. That is to prove for you to be able to speak there. So you see, in these places you will not be able even to sometimes uh, preach unless you prove that you have given your heart to that organization. To be able to speak the Word of God today you need to prove that you love the world, you're committed to the world, and faithful to the world. If you are faithful to Jesus, ha, I can promise you, most places you will not be able to speak. You will not be able to enter there. To be, you will not be able to have a position, definitely, because you don't love the world. You see, that's a requirement today to be a minister. You need to be a reverend. You need to be registered. You need to be... Uh, what do, you, what do they call it? They need to be... Uh, yeah, I forgot that, that word. <clears throat> then, then you can minister. That's, that's really bad. That's really bad. So, the po uh, positions appointed by God, they are appointed by God and not by man. They are appointed to edify the body of Christ so that we come into the so we can come into the unity of the faith. So these people must have some kind of understanding of the truth and must speak the truth in love so that we can come into unity of the faith. But the only bishops or elders. That's the same word, elders or bishops. They are appointed by the apostles, it seems like. And deacons, servants in the church, they're appointed by the elders in the city. It's a, no, it's a whole nother structure. It's not a structure of the world. It's a structure by God. For the church, the body of Christ. Today... We have come to the point where almost all Christians are committed to the world. That's a scary, scary thing. We are required, almost all Christianity has been deceived into thinking the world, the worldly organizations, the worldly groups, ministries, are the church. Our churches that we need to belong to, commit to, be faithful to. You need to find yourself a structure like that and be committed to that. Then you will be accepted and approved and... Uh, wow. All Christians, almost all Christians, many, most... Christians that you meet, they're they are not following and committing uh, to the world. They're not committed to God with all their heart. But of course there are, there are people within these systems 
who are committed to God, they have not given their heart to these systems. They do follow Jesus. They are excited when they meet another brother and they would love to fellowship. And they're in, the, they're in freedom. They're not giving their heart so they cannot fellowship. Of course, there are people like that within these structures, within these systems. And God knows them. And even some ministers may just be deceived. They, they really love God. They've just been deceived. But when they hear the truth, they will receive it. They will love the truth. They will hear the word of truth when they hear it. Just like Jesus said, if you were of God, you would have loved my words. You would have received my words. But, but he said to the Pharisees, but they did, did not receive his word because they were not of God. So we are, we are, many are today members of these organizations and structures. They're members of the world. They're kind of members of Christ when you talk to them about, about the body of Christ and being members. They, they agree with that, but they're also members of this world structure. They've given their heart to, heart to Jesus to a certain degree, and that they've also given their heart to the world. To be a member, to belong to the world, or to go to the world. To structures that are called churches. Structures of the world called churches. Structures of the world dressed in Christian names and and uh, expressions. It's almost like a wolf in a sheepskin. It's a wolf. You say the world is a wolf. If you love the world, you will, you will give your heart to the king of this world. The king of the world is the devil. Many, our identity is no longer Jesus, but the world has become our identity. When you meet somebody on the street again, you ask them, what church do you belong to? Their identity is not Jesus, I belong to Jesus, I've come to him, I've become a member of his body, and I belong to the brothers who love him. No, that's not our identity anymore. When you meet somebody, you ask them, they say, well, I belong to, I'm not, maybe I shouldn't mention any names, because there are no difference. All are the same, the structures of the world. Their identity is another name than Jesus. That's what they belong to. That's where they've given their heart. That's the family they belong to. Not the family of God. Well, they say they belong to the family of God, but they have given their heart to another family, a family of the world, a structure of the family, uh, uh, a structure of the world. That's their identity, and they love it. And they don't. Very often, they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to come out. They don't want to separate them from the world, themselves from the world. They love it. They've been there for years. It's become part of their being. It's so sad. So we identify ourselves with all kinds of other names and we identify ourselves with the world. And we may also be deeply committed to many worldly traditions and rituals to sin, to passions of the flesh, to our friends, to family, TV, internet and more. You see, it's not the world, only the worldly systems that, can, that are called churches that can steal our attention, but the passions of the flesh in itself, the world, television, internet, 
things we're seeking first. We have almost no time to pray because we're so sitting using so many hours to watch TV or fa favorite programs on TV, to sit on the internet and chat on Facebook and you and uh, Instagram and uh, I don't know what. We've given our heart to it. We've become almost addicted to it. And then we have almost no time to pray or to do the will of God or, or read His Word and know His Word. Maybe we are only committed to, to listen to delus delusions in the internet, videos on the internet. There are all kinds of crazy uh, things, uh, things there. And maybe we have given our heart to that. But not to the Word of God. Not to the truth. Not to Jesus. We seek those other things first. Now we love the world. We, our, we have given our heart to it. We need to repent from that. We need to repent. If we want the kingdom of God, we need to repent. And give our, lie, our commitment and faithfulness to Jesus alone. Only then... Will we make it? The Bible says, if we follow Jesus, we shall not walk in darkness, but we shall have the light of life. John 8, 12. But if we don't follow Jesus with all our heart, then we are in darkness. Much of Christianity must therefore be in darkness today. They have no love of the Father because they love the world. As in 1 John 2.15. <clears throat> the love of the Father is not in them. Or they don't have the, their spirit is not alive. They don't have no revelation. They have no love for the brothers. They love the world. They're committed to their, their, their family, their church. They love the brother, some, some Christians because they belong to the same church. They love them because they're because of flesh, because of something else but Jesus. They cannot commit to be to help and to love true brothers, but only those that are committed to the same cause under the same pastor. And they will have no light. He that follows Jesus will have the light of life. But if you don't follow Jesus 100%, you will not have the light of life, but you will be in darkness. So. So you will have no revelation. No revelation in the Word. The Word is not coming out from the Bible. And, and wow, you see, wow, and it gives you food. That's what the Word will do when, when you are alive. The Word will be food to you. It will give you, it will edify you. You will feel strengthened. You will feel alive. It will give you joy, peace, love. You will feel excited. You have none of that. Because you are in darkness. No direction from God. He will not lead you, direct you in which direction to take. Because you don't have the presence of God. You don't have the light of God. The, the word of God, God is not a light to your path. A lamp to your path. You see, Jesus promised in John 14, 21. John 14, 21. Gospel of John. <clears throat> Fourteen twenty one. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be lo loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That's the promise of God. When we love the Word of God, we are committed to His Word. It doesn't mean that we are perfect, but we are committed and faithful. Then we will be loved by the Father, and Jesus will manifest Himself to us 
And also in verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. You see, when you love Jesus, you will have his presence. You will have the glory of God with you. And if you don't love Jesus with all your heart, you will have no life. Your spirit will not be alive. It will not, not flow life from your spirit. And we can read how it is when you do love Jesus with all your life, then your spirit come alive. And it's written in Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 7 to 8. Proverbs 3, 7 to 8. It is written, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. In the Old Testament, to fear the Lord was to depart from evil. Uh, that's written in Proverbs 8.13. To fear God is to hate evil. And here's written, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That is to follow Jesus. You, you depart from evil to follow Jesus. In the Old Testament, many places they used the term fear the Lord. But in the New Testament, it's written about love Jesus, love God. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. You see, then your spirit shall come alive. You shall be alive and, uh, and, and, and to, uh, to, follow, to follow Jesus this way, this life, it will give life to your body. Strength to your body. Life to your body. Life to your environment. It will give, it will spring up eternal life from your heart. And it will produce the blessing of God. That is the promise of God. Uh, it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Wow. And then we can read from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22 to 23. Or I can read from verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health. To all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Hallelujah. So keep your heart. Why? How do we keep our hearts? You keep your heart committed to the word of God. And then the word of God will be life to those who find them. You see, to depart from evil and to be committed to the Word, to keep the Word of God, it shall become be life to you. It shall be life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It's a double. It is life and it is health. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Hallelujah, it's so great. But if we do not love Jesus, if we commit our heart to something else or someone else, then we will not be, we will be out of grace. The goodness of God will not benefit us anymore. Galatians 5.4 Galatians 5.4 There's written, you have become estranged from Christ. You have attempted to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. This was just, well, this is about somebody who do not follow the truth. They do not follow Christ. They do not follow uh, the, truth, the truth of the word. They want to be made righteous by, by works. But that's, that's another thing we can uh, go deeper into another time. But it's possible to fall from grace. If you're committed to something else, to, to, to Jesus and the truth. 
if you're committed to the philosophies of the world or to the legalism of the Old Testament or the Mosaic, Mosaic law <coughs> to, to legalism you're falling out of grace and we fall out of grace if you love the world we fall out of grace I don't say that everybody in those structures and systems are have given their heart to it and do love it but if they do when they love the world they fall out of grace and when we fall out of grace when we love the world we have no more power in prayer no more power in prayer and we can read from Proverbs Proverbs chapter 1 Verse 28 and 29. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. You see, when we do not choose the fear of the Lord or to love God with all our heart, then God will not answer when we pray heaven will be closed Op heaven will not be, or, or be open we will, there will not be an open heaven we will have no power in prayer so that when we ask we shall receive you see the Bible says ask and you shall receive knock and it shall be opened to you. but that is to those who love him to, uh, that are disciples that have given their heart to him that have entered his kingdom they can ask and they shall receive. They can knock and it will be open to them. They will seek and they shall find. But it's not so with those who walk in darkness. It is not so. Because they hated knowledge. They didn't commit, they didn't love the word of God. They hated knowledge. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. Wow. Wow. So, we need to repent, therefore, and believe in the gospel. Mark 1.15 Mark 1.15 And Jesus said, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. <clears throat> repent and believe in the gospel. And you see, to believe in the gospel is more than to have faith in the story of what happened to Jesus. It's, it's more than having faith in what happened. It's not a story, but in faith in what really happened to Jesus. You believe that. You have faith in that. But, but to believe is more than having faith. You see, to, faith without action is dead. But when you act on your faith, it comes alive. And how do we act on our faith? I will see from John, John chapter 10, John chapter 10, verse 26 to 28. <clears throat> and then he's talking to some Pharisees or, 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 or Jews here. And he says, he's saying, But you do not believe, because you are not my sheep, of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You see, <coughs> you believe not, because you are not my sheep. And then he's explaining, he's ex actually explaining what it means to believe. Because those who believe, they are his sheep. And he says, my sheep, they hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You see, the sheep of Jesus, they have given their heart to Jesus, and he, he knows them, intimately. He knows them, because they belong to him. And they follow him. Of course, 100%, of course, with all their heart, they've repented. And they believe in the gospel. They've repented to believe in the gospel. And then he's saying, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. 
So, we need to come away from being committed to the world. And we need to come away from any structure of the world that is trying to make us commit to it or trying to make members make us become members that trying to make people become members of their organization of their worldly structure you see <clears throat> those are dangerous systems we need to flee them for our life because they are speaking uh, lies that try to make you commit to give 10% of your money to that structure to that organization. They are asking you to give your heart to it. Not to Jesus. Not to the Spirit of God. To be led by the Spirit. They are not training you to walk after the Spirit. Or to be led by the Spirit. Or to give by the Spirit. Or to give in faith. No. They are training you to walk in the flesh. To be committed to the flesh. Not to the Spirit. You see, God wants us to walk after the Spirit. And those who serve Him, God is Spirit. And those who serve Him must serve or worship in Spirit and in truth. We must serve in Spirit and in truth, not in the flesh. We don't serve God in the flesh, but works of the law. We work, we walk in faith, we work in... We walk in, 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 in according to the directions that are coming from the head, Jesus Christ, from the life of the Spirit. We walk according to the, the law of the life of Spirit that is in the body of Christ. Not according to fleshly rules made by man. You see, we need to flee all these organizations and systems and structures of the world that are trying to make us members and commit to the flesh. And, <clears throat> and be committed to that, those systems. Whatever name they have, get out! Go away! They're dangerous, and they're especially dangerous. It's not so de it's not, it, it, if they try to make you become a, ob commit to obvious sin, like uh, to, to be a, to, to sleep with men or to be adultery, uh, adulterous and, uh, or to steal or to murder. That's obvious sin. But these structures that I'm talking about here is more, they're dressed in Christian terms. They look like church. They're dressed in, with names uh, that, from the Bible and, and, and they are easily... Christians are easily deceived to think this is the real thing. But it's a wolf in a sheepskin. Sheep, sheepskin. You see, when many people come to Christ, <clears throat> they're excited, they repent, they will follow Jesus. But then, right after they come to Jesus, the wolves are around them and try to eat them. They're trying to make you be committed to the world. And then suddenly they come and they, they're trying to uh, convince you that you have to find yourself a local church, a local structure of the world, that you must become a member and you need to commit to the pastor and to his vision and to the doctrines of this organization. You have to do that. <clears throat> and slowly they are uh, they're being trained and manipulated into giving their heart to the world. And, and at one point they may be have so excited about Jesus, but later this excitement dies and they end up in darkness. That's why this is so dangerous. You need to flee it with your life. It's the devil's plan to destroy Christianity. The devil's plan to destroy Christianity, to destroy the Christians. And when he gets you to commit to the world, and to become a member of the world, and when you meet somebody and ask what church you belong to, you say, I belong to this, I belong to that, I belong to this. Then the devil got you. The devil got you where he wants you. With no power. With no life. He got you in darkness. And then he has power over you. He'll be your king. He has power to attack you, to destroy you. You have no power to, to resist the devil. 
if you have given your heart to the world. If you are just deceived and you're in there and, and you really, all your heart is with Jesus, <clears throat> of course then you have the power within you. Then you are alive. <laughs> but get out of it. Get away from it. Flee it with your life. Seek to the fellowship of the brothers. Because be not committed to the world. We need to commit to Jesus to follow Him and to follow His Word. We need to come back to our first love. Those who are, are in darkness today, repent and come back to your first love where you first received Jesus and were excited and He came alive. Come back. It's written in Revelations 2.4. Revelation 2.4 Revelation 2.4. There it's written. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand, lampstand from its place, unless you repent. <clears throat> we need to come back to our first love, where we are fully committed to Jesus. We are following Him. And remain there until he comes. My sheep will hear my voice and they will follow me and I will give them eternal life, says Jesus. John 10, 26-28 John 10, 26-28 or, or verse, only verse 27 My sheep hear my voice and I know them, and they follow me. Thank you very much. May God bless you all. Thank you for listening to this message. If, we, if you want to listen uh, to more messages that I preach, you can go to YouTube, look for my name, search for my name. You can go to YouTube, or you can go to www.trustchrist.faith or www.chalmotlan.com Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.